How we doing everybody? This morning we're going to be taking a quick look at the Borg Warner 1356 manual shift transfer case that I'm going to be using on our 4x4 conversion on our 1996 Ford F-150. Now, if you're asking me why am I using this particular transfer case, and the answer is, is this is a factory Ford transfer case. So, I know that uh, all the drive shafts be the correct length and that it will bolt right up to the extension housing on the transmission with no problem. Now I've already drained the automatic transmission fluid out of this transfer case. That's what these Borg Warner cases use and it looked just fine. It was a little bit brown but there was no water or no metal. So we're not going to be opening up the case we're just going to be refilling it with some fresh Mercon 5 ATF. We're also going to be replacing the input shaft seal as well as the tail shaft seal. Now I'm just doing those as a precautionary thing just so I don't have to replace them down the road. Now we have our input shaft, we have our tail shaft, and that also goes to, that also functions as your slip yoke for the rear drive shaft. Now, if it were on a Bronco, it would have a fixed yoke like the front drive shaft has, and there would be a slip coupler in the rear drive shaft. Now, on an F 150, uh, F 250, 350, this case was used uh, in Broncos and the uh, half ton three-quarter ton and one ton trucks. Now, like I said, in the front drive shaft, it's got a fixed yoke and the slip is done with a slip coupler in the drive shaft. And we have our vent fitting. Now, I've just got that capped off to keep any water and crap out of it when I was washing the case off. And then we have our shift position switch. Now, I'm not going to worry about hooking that up. All that does is turn on the 4x4 and low range lights on the cluster. And since we're doing a manual shift transfer case, I'm going to know that it's in 4 wheel drive or low range. So now we're just going to check the shift here real quick. Now, I've got it in the 2 wheel drive high position. So, I'm going to turn the input shaft. And we can see that our tail shaft is turning just fine, no problem. And it is rolling over nice and smooth. Now we're going to pop it into 4 high. Now the detent is kind of small, so it is a little bit hard to find. But I think we got it right there. Let me just check. Yep. And you can see our front is turning and now when you're in four high that's just a one-to-one -one ratio now we're gonna pop it into neutral and you can see nothing is turning now now we're gonna put her into four low and you can see how slow the output is turning as compared to how quickly I'm turning the input. And when I was I was also when I was watching the front, I was also looking at the tail shaft and it's turning just fine. So when I return, we're going to be replacing these seals. Now I ordered the seals and I should have them within a week or so. So bring you guys back and we'll replace those seals. Alrighty everybody, we're back now, Wednesday evening after work. Got our new Timken seals. Get a 4503N as well as a 714503. Here's our new tail shaft seal and here's our new input shaft seal. Now, got the old ones out the other night after work 
and I did that by just running a self-drilling screw into the seal part of the metal and then I just used these little pair of pliers to lever the seal out and I did that for both seals cleaned up the uh, inside of the transfer case just with some compressed air and some brake clean everything looks beautiful So today at work, made up this little special tool for driving the seals home. Just a piece of two inch conduit. And I got the fat end here, which is going to fit perfectly over the seal as you can see. And then on the way home, just stopped at Ace, grabbed a two inch cap for less than two bucks, and got myself a nice seal installer. Also got my 48 ounce dead blow, which be very helpful to put the seals in. So, set you guys up on the camera. I'm going to put a little bit of this Ever Johnson gasket sealing compound on the outside of the seals. And we're going to drive the seals home, hopefully in real time. So, let me set you guys up. I'll bring you guys back. Okay, got you guys all set up on the tripod now. We're going to do the input shaft seal first. Like I said, we're going to take some of this gasket sealing compound. I'm just going to make a light coat of it around the outside of the seal. I should also say that I'm also going to just put a little light coat of grease on the seal lips. Let me just grab some grease. And our grease here, I'm just using some regular little wheel burn grease. We're just going to put a very light coat on the seal lips so our initial startup is not dry. And just going to pivot the case a little bit. Crooked. I'm going to shut you guys off, bring you back when I get the seal installed. Alrighty, I got the input shaft seal all driven home. It just went in a little bit crooked and I was able to kind of get it going back in straight. Went in just fine. So, all we're going to do now going to spin our transfer case around. I think this case is like 110 pounds, something like that. All sorts of stuff moving around on the bench. So actually after this I will clean up the bench here. Alrighty, same thing. I'm going to put a little bit of gasket sealer compound around the edge of the seal. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the seal lips. Now the outer portion of the seal has got a little hole in it. A little drain hole, a little weep hole. We're going to orientate that down.
and we're just using an extremely light thin coat. Same thing with the grease, just very light skim coat so that when we have our initial start up and move, we're not going to be running our seals dry. Hopefully this one will go home a little bit easier than that input shaft seal did. Kind of hard when I don't have anybody to help me. Well, done fucked the seal up, so I have to get another one guys. Here's what happened to that seal. This here is too small to completely go over this dust boot here. So what happened is this inner edge here being sh well as sharp as it is for PVC cut our dust boot. Now you probably could run it without the dust boot but I want to make sure everything is done properly so I will get another seal I'm not going to record putting that other seal in I'll have to make another bigger tool maybe two and a quarter two and a half I did also today at lunchtime at work bead blasted up the transfer case shifter bracket that mounts to the extension housing I also cleaned up the shift link. Now these bushings here I'm obviously going to replace them. I was able to find them on Amazon. They're a dorm in part. And so like I said, I'm going to be painting these up. I'm going to just use some Rust-Oleum flat black. They should come out looking nice. So see you guys in the next video. Uh, Next video hopefully will be coming out Sunday. Going up to Outboard Club Swap Meet on Saturday. Definitely bring you guys along for that. So, see you guys then. Bye.